Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the School World Order. I am your host, the Taoist Professor John Kleisick, author of School World Order, the Technocratic Globalization of Corporatized Education. Okay, so today I would like to embark on a series of lectures on the classical trivia method of education in order to give you a set of skills, techniques, and strategies that you can use to teach yourself basically any subject that you're curious about. So whether you want to be successful in an academic setting or simply want to explore your own curiosities on your own, the classical trivia method will enable you to do so. So before I start breaking down the trivia method of grammar, logic, and rhetoric, I thought it would be appropriate to just give you a brief overview of the seven classical liberal arts which encompass both the trivium and the quadrivium. Now, this would probably be a good time to give you a history of the classical method of education, uh, where it comes from and how it gets passed down to us today, but that would require a video in and of itself. Rather than give you a detailed or even a concise history lesson, my goal for this series of lectures is to give you a crash course in how to actually apply the classical method, in particular the trivium method of grammar, logic, and rhetoric, so that you can become an autodidact, which is just a fancy word for somebody who can teach themselves and learn on their own. So with no further ado, let's begin a breakdown of the seven classical liberal arts, which can be divided into the trivium and the quadrivium. So the quest for knowledge always begins with your experience and the questions that arise from those experiences. So the most immediate way to interpret your experience is by means of sensory perception. In other words, the five senses, that is touch, sight, hearing, taste, and smell. Now, sensory perception can elicit certain instincts that enable you to respond to whatever phenomena you're experiencing in a given moment. But if we rely solely on our sensory perceptions, all we're able to do is have reactionary responses to the natural or social stimuli in our environment. If we wish to transcend our instinctive or emotional reactions to stimuli, we need to be able to categorize the phenomena of reality in ways that enable us to recognize or even predict patterns in the natural world and in social dynamics. Stated differently, we need to be able to qualify or quantify the phenomena of reality. Hence, the seven classical liberal arts. First, we have the classical trivium or the three language arts. In other words, the study of words that enable qualitative analysis. And then we have the quadrivium or the mathematical sciences. In other words, the study of numbers which enable quantitative analysis. The trivium always comes before the quadrivium because qualitative analysis always precedes quantitative analysis. Why? Because quantities do not exist in a vacuum. Rather, quantitative analysis is always a numerical measurement of a particular quality or qualities. In other words, take the number five, for example. If we use the number five, we have to refer to five units of something. So are we talking about five miles? Are we talking about five gallons? Are we talking about five hours? Are we talking about five pounds? Are we talking about five hertz? Are we talking about five joules? So before we can use any of the quadrivium sciences, we have to first have particular qualities to analyze with those numerical or quantitative methods of analysis. So beginning with the trivium, first we start with grammar, which is simply the linguistic symbols, whether spoken or written, that give names to the observable phenomena of reality. Logic is the process by which we organize those names or those grammatical definitions into non-contradictory systems. And then rhetoric is the art by which we express those non-contradictory systems using grammar. Once we have a basic vocabulary of a specific subject that has been organized into non-contradictory systems, we can then apply 
the quadrivium. We can then apply quantitative or numerical analysis of those observable phenomena to which we have given names. So the four arts or sciences of the quadrivium are arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. So arithmetic is number in itself. Geometry is number in shape. Music is number in sound and time. And astronomy is number in space in time or also number in motion in time. Now, obviously the last couple centuries have given us various new sciences that are not listed here in the quadrivium, namely biology, psychology, chemistry, physics, and various other specializations which fall under those sciences. But to be sure, each of those sciences is simply a more complex iteration or combination of these seven classical liberal arts. Now, for the rest of this series of lectures, I won't really be dealing with the quadrivium. Rather, I will be doing a deep dive into the trivium method of language arts, not just as methods of oral and written communication, but also as methods of research and also as methods for refining the art of thinking. So insofar as thinking is the process of dialoguing with yourself through an inner monologue, the trivium method can be used to determine whether the narratives you're telling yourself in your head either contradict your own experiences or any other qualities that you can observe or name or any other quantities that you can numerically measure. Meaning, if the narrative that you have in your head doesn't match up either with your five senses, observable qualities, or observable quantities, then you can revise or edit that narrative based on experience and qualitative or quantitative data in order to recalibrate that narrative so that it actually matches up with observable, measurable reality in a non-contradictory way. So to sort of summarize and recap everything we've modeled here in this breakdown of the seven classical liberal arts, you are here, this little human in the center, you have an immediate experience through your five senses, touch, sight, hearing, taste, and smell. Based on those experiences, you give those experiences names using grammar. Then you organize those names into patterns or systems that are non-contradictory. You narrate those non-contradictory patterns or systems to yourself through your thoughts and ideas. Then you can go a step further by quantifying those narratives with arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. And then of course, you could go a step further and take the quantitative methods of analysis the mathematical arts and apply that knowledge to the contemporary sciences of biology, psychology, physics, chemistry, etc. as well. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to the seven classical liberal arts, and in particular, the trivium method of language arts or the study of words through qualitative analysis. In the next video, I will break down the three trivium arts of grammar, logic, and rhetoric in more detail, providing you with some basic elements of each of these particular components of the classical trivium method, which will then set us on a journey through a series of lectures that will get more and more specific regarding each of those basic elements. If you enjoyed this video and you found it at all informative, insightful, or helpful, please like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time for the next video in which we will dig deeper into the classical trivium method. Thanks so much for your time. Peace. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you'd like to check out more of my research, go to my website, schoolworldorder.info, where you can find archives of all my interviews, all my articles, and a bibliography of all my citations.
There's also links to all my social media and video platforms. And you can sign up for my email list too, where you will receive notifications whenever I produce a new article, interview, or video. To support my work, become a research member for just $5 a month, and you'll gain access to my WebBrain database which contains Charlotte Thompson Iserbeet's archive of U.S. Department of Education files and other rare historical documents. The database will be updated with weekly document dumps and you will be notified whenever I upload a new dossier. Thanks again for watching. Peace.